Welcome to the ITSP Magazine Podcast Network, a modern, innovative multimedia platform, broadcasting ideas and connecting minds. Every company has a story to tell, from the small startup to the large enterprise, and everything in between. This is one of them. We hope you enjoy this brand story conversation. Everybody, you're very welcome to a new on location from RSA conference. This is Sean Martin, where I get to talk with lots of cool people about cool innovations. This year's theme is the art of possible, and uh, I think sometimes we we forget what we're tr- aiming for, which is to make business possible, not to enable security teams. <laughs> the security is there to help enable the business, and and what's a big driver of business? Data. Of course, our systems have changed and shifted and morphed over time. Data is pretty consistent, and it's a very important part of what we're gonna, what uh, business relies upon. And Vishal Gupta, thank you for joining me today. We're going to talk about fun. what it means to protect data in, in this new world of technology lives everywhere. Super easy. Everywhere than where than where we used to live ten years ago. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> few, first, a few words about who you are, Vishal, and uh, what you're up to. Uh, I'm one of the founders of Seclore and uh, the agenda is to make sure that security and collaboration don't become mutually exclusive goals. So they don't, they're not competing with each other and that CISOs and security teams become popular within the organization. Perfect. Well said. That's it. We're done. <laughs> <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> now, no, in all seriousness, um, as we were talking earlier, the things have changed, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Mobile phones are personal. The perimeters fading away, if not non-existent at this point. Yep. Um, stuff's moved to the cloud. Stuff's moved back on-prem. Yet still, we rely heavily on our data. So, get, paint a picture of kind of the state of the world now in terms of the technology stack and how businesses are operating, mm-hmm. and uh, and perhaps where things might be left a little exposed where they shouldn't be. I think enterprise focus for the last many decades has been around protecting infrastructure, right, which is devices, networks, applications, and the likes. And the challenge with all of this, protecting all of this infrastructure is that you just cannot do enough of it. So data is moving across all devices, it's moving across all networks, all applications, and it's also moving to things or stuff, infrastructure, that the enterprise cannot monitor or control. Right, so personal devices, for, for example, public networks like RSA here, everybody's using a public network. Um, applications have all moved to the cloud and so on. And for the enterprise, it's become a little bit of a data chase. It's almost like you, the enterprises are constantly following the data and everywhere the data goes, the enterprise wants to control it. Personal devices, cloud applications, public networks, third parties and so on. And it's impossible. You, you just cannot chase the data enough and secure the spots where the data lands on. So that's, I think, that's a big challenge for the enterprise. And our insight at the time we, we were starting Seclore was that the only way to protect data is to protect data. I know it's a self-referential <laughs> statement, but it's true. But there is no the data, amount of infrastructure security that why, will why mean do they, security. Why do they compromise systems? Yet maybe they want to take down the system for denial of service, but ultimately it's about the data. Absolutely. So wherever it is. So talk to me about how this reality impacts how teams operate. If they're, if they're constantly buying technologies and putting policies and controls in place, chasing this data, mm-hmm. where, where, are they, where are they missing the mark? It's just not possible. So yeah. enterprises are realizing, teams are realizing that they just cannot get policy uniformity across devices, networks, applications, employees, third parties, and so on. Unless they move the, they change the game. The rules of the game change, and the only thing that they really care about is data. So there are a lot of examples where data security actually replaces infrastructure security. We have a lot of financial services companies which who have been able to completely dismantle their VPN infrastructure. Because now the data that they're sending over the network is protected, and therefore the need to protect or control the network itself goes away, for example. Interesting, okay. Uh, there are lots of enterprises who've been able to do away with uh, personal device control, MDM kind of technologies, 
because they realize that they don't really care about the device. Right. Right. They only care about the enterprise data going to that personal device. Because there will always be a hole, right? There's always there's a hole. There's always an open end somewhere. Yes, absolutely. That, that, that slips through the policy yeah. cracks, right? And, and the other option is to stop the data from going. But yeah. as I always say, if you stop data from flowing, it, it's like water, right? It starts stinking, mm. right? So it has to constantly flow for it to be useful. And it doesn't flow where you think it's flowing. Exactly. <laughs> it, it flows in all the wrong <laughs> the, places. The water is coming out of that plug. <laughs> that's not where it's coming in. <laughs> yes. So, ah, yeah. All right, interesting. So. So how, do, how does what Seclor does help with this? What Seclor is doing is we've created a mechanism by which security, privacy, compliance, observability, everything can be built into the data itself. So consider it like a firewall around a piece of data. Right, so the simplest example I can give you is uh, I send you a document via email. Right? Something which happens maybe trillions of times every day. Right. Now, what Seclor has done is that you take the document or the email and you put a firewall around it. And the firewall has certain rules. Who can access it? What can each of these people do with that document or email? How long can they continue to use it? From where can they use it? What is the purpose? And so on. So, for example, I can send you a document and say, Sean can view and edit and respond back to me, but not forward and copy and print. Okay. And at the end of three days, I don't like you anymore. I do like you, right. but I hope so. But at the end of three you days, if I don't me. like you, yeah. like me, but not yeah. zero trust. <laughs> uh, but at the end of three days, I can press a button and make all copies of the data vanish for you. Right. Right. So the capability to ref make data collaboration or sharing reflect real-world relationships. Like you can recall data back. You can stop data from being misused while continuing to encourage data being used and making that distinction very clearly that if you respond back to me, that's good, mm -hmm. but if you forward it to somebody else, that's bad. Right. right? That's the distinction between use and misuse. So how, how do teams kind of, because I see a few things here and I want, I want your, your, yeah, your view of how this happens. Mm -hmm. So I need to shift from infrastructure protection and I need to shift to data protection. Right. Um, and I say those separately because I think there's two different things, skill sets and and, and how you build programs and all that. So how do you help organizations make that transition? So the, there are a couple of unique challenges that come with data. If you're trying to protect infrastructure, right? So for example, if you're trying to protect devices, there is a finite countable number of devices in enterprise. If, a, if an enterprise has 10,000 employees, then maybe it is dealing with 20,000 devices, right? Maybe. But when it comes to data, it's uncountable. An enterprise of 10,000 employees will typically be dealing with billions of pieces of data, trillions sometimes, right? So the first challenge in this whole data protection is just to even do an inventory of what is, where is my data, what is happening to it currently, right? And those kind of things. So that becomes a big challenge of its own. We help enterprises solve that problem. Okay. The second is, now, you're, now you've discovered it, You've classified into highly confidential and public. So in, in your mailbox, there might be a highly confidential board communication. And the, the email just next to it is a lunch invitation. Right? Presumably, these two are very different con levels of confidentiality. Right. Depends on who you are having lunch with. I know. Right? That's a good question. So assuming it's... It's, if it's Marco. It's, Michael yes. Bennett, <laughs> yes. It's not confidential. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> right? Uh, but if it's your girlfriend, you don't want that, yeah. right? So, so the being able to apply differential security and privacy policies to these two emails, which are both lying in the same mailbox. Right. It's your mailbox next to each other and so on. So that's something that we help enterprises define these differential security policies and actually apply it to these two emails which are sitting in the same mailbox. And the last but not the least is being able to monitor and control what's happening to that data. That forward-looking financial statement for a for a publicly listed company could be worth billions of dollars for a very short period of time, right? If you knew how a publicly listed company is going to perform even 10 minutes in advance, that can mean a lot of money yeah. and a lot of lawsuits, yeah. right? And so on. Uh, so being which is able an issue to for the company, not, which is not huge, just the person that makes the money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For the person who's, not, who's making the money, it's not an issue at right. all, right? Right. But for the company, it's, it can become a big issue. Yeah. 
investor lawsuits and so on. So okay. we have a lot of listed companies who actually use Seclore to okay. make sure that, for example, forward-looking financial statements don't go out before the analyst call actually happens. Right? We have a lot of enterprises who use Seclore to, to protect intellectual property, designs that they are sharing with fabricators who are in a different part of the world. For example, but you have to share. You have to How share. How are they going to build it? Otherwise, yeah, exactly. It's like you stop water from flowing; it starts stinking. Yep. So if you stop data from flowing, it becomes useless. Right. I mean, the safest computer in the world is the one that you that you never switch on. Right. It's also the most useless. <laughs> exactly. Right. So you don't want that. You want right. to share, but you want to make sure that it is secure. And that's what. So that's what I, the, in the initial period I, I talked about security and collaboration being viewed as. Uh, conflicting goals for enterprises. Right. Either I share or I don't share. Right? These are the two options. And we are creating a third option which is share but be able to control. Got it. Perfect. Which makes these two mutually conflicting goals be achievable together. Sounds like a dream to me. So how, what's, what's the first step? Because I, I think you mentioned the, the, the inventory and kind of getting a sense or a picture of what's there, how it's being access and used and shared perhaps even mm -hmm. and then then you switch on the controls right. talk to me about some of the first steps so the first step is usually that we at, we focus on your large enterprises as a company okay. so our, our kind of worldview is restricted to large enterprises but within that our uh, some of the biggest challenges that we've seen enterprises is uh, to try and boil the ocean right which okay. is to do this for the whole enterprise all at one go and that's almost a surefire way to disaster. So what we encourage enterprises is to establish specific use cases, maybe one or two, maybe board communication yeah. could be a confidential, mind, yeah. right? Uh, intellectual property, uh, compliance around privacy, right? And so on. These are usually the, the, the most common use cases. And our, our um, strategy is always to encourage enterprises to, to budget for early quick wins. Right. So if there's a specific context that is established, right? let's say confidential data needs to go to a third party, then focus on that, get it up and running in two weeks, yep. a month, right? and so on. And for a large enterprise, getting anything done in that time frame is a win. Yep. Right. Get that, establish this, go from one or two use cases to three or four, and then a pattern usually emerges within an enterprise. Then an enterprise-wide rollout works. Got it. We've seen a lot of enterprise deployments of data-centric security technology, which is the class of technologies that, that we belong to, uh, try and do an enterprise-wide inventory or an enterprise-wide data protection and, and failing at it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm a huge fan of the quick wins, repeatable wins, yeah. and you scale that. And uh, sounds like you have a good strategy. And uh, I'm thrilled to meet you, Michelle, and to hear Thank this you. story. Thank and uh, thanks for having Thanks me. everybody for listening to this brand story with Seclor and uh, Vishal Gupta. Please do connect with them and the team. Yes, absolutely. Uh, here LinkedIn. at RSA or on LinkedIn. Good. It's always easy wherever you are. And uh, thanks everybody. Catch you on the next one. Thank you.